Section B, equilibrium now in three dimensions. Okay, so we've seen these are our equations of equilibrium. Some of the forces uh, in vector form equals zero. Some of the moments equals zero. But in scalar form, we need these six equations to be fulfilled. These are independent equations, right? So in two dimensions, we looked at x and y and x and y. But in three dimensions, we're looking at x, y, z, x, y, z. So this means um, these three we're, we're pretty familiar with, but what do these three mean uh, concerning the, the moments? It means the sum of the moments about the x-axis is zero, about the y-axis is zero, about the z-axis. So if any one of these is not fulfilled, you don't have equilibrium. So for example, a car, a car could be accelerating um, in, this, in the x direction. Okay, so that means that some of the forces in the x is not zero. But it could, it's, but some of the forces in the y could be zero. And some of the forces, let's call, yeah, doesn't, let's call this um, x, y, z, right? I mean, I know it's z, but I, I'm wondering if I've put it in the right direction. And we could have some of the forces in the z equals zero. My point is, and we could have the three rotations zero as well. The point is, if any one of these is not zero, we don't have equilibrium, okay? pretty obvious. Now, what's the next point I want to make? Um, the next point is when we look at that equation, 3.3, .3, which we just looked at, those six equations, in three dimensions, guys, always, you don't have to, but, but to make your life so much easier, always express those quantities in vector form, meaning express them in terms of the unit vectors i, j, and k. It just makes life so much easier because then all we do is we group your i components together to get your x, your, your, some of your forces in the x, right? Some of your forces in the x. So then you just group all the i's of all your forces. You group them together. Some of the forces in the y, you group all the j components together etc etc okay but we'll, we'll look at some examples for the moments for the second equation some of the moments again we express uh, the forces in vector form i's j's and k's but we also now need to use the cross product so we need our position vector <coughs> from which is a, a is a position vector from point o to remember this guy any point, any point, any point on the line of action of the force. Okay? So the sum of the moments is equal to the sum of R cross F. Okay? But we'll we'll look at some examples just just to just to prime us, okay? Alright, that's fine for now. Let's see you in the next one.